Welcome back to Gadget, Gadget, Gadget with your host, me. It's me. It's me. Um, I'm your host, Joey Landreth, and we got special guest in the house working the second camera, Mr. Dave Landreth. Behind the camera, as always, my lovely wife, Anna Salgado. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoy today's show. Put up a post last week uh, asking folks if they had questions, and they did have questions. So we're gonna we're gonna dive into some of them. The question is, how do I set up my amps? It really does depend, and maybe I'll walk you through setting up one or two different amps. Um, but specifically, there was a question asking about the two rock. So um, this really would apply with any sort of Fender-y type amp. I usually start with everything kind of flat. So this this amp has a gain and a master volume. So I would probably set the gain to 12 o'clock, treble mids bass, 12 o'clock, and the master I would kind of set to the size of the room so that it's appropriate, and, but still fun to play. Um, and then something that I think is really important to know about this style amp, this circuit amp, and, and lots of like blackface fenders use this. Uh, I'm not going to name off all, because I'll probably make a bunch of mistakes, and then somebody will get in the comments. And it'll keep me up at night. But the, uh, the tone stack on this amp and lots of Fender amps, the Fender amps that I use are passive, meaning that they're reductive. When you're at 12 o'clock, you're actually, you're actually um, attenuating whatever frequency band you're adjusting. So if you really want to hear what the power amp is doing all the way open, you could actually, you would actually turn the treble and the, and the bass, or in this case, treble mids bass, all the way to 12. Dumble used to do this as a mod on a lot of his amps, and it's it was like a, uh, they would call it the tone stack lift. So he would lift the tone stack completely out of the circuit, and the power will be wide open. Anyways, all that to say, I'm not going to do that. Um, setting everything to 12 o'clock just gives me like a good kind of neutral idea of what the amp is doing, and then I might almost certainly make changes based on that. So, I, you know, with this amp, I'll start. I'll start here. Sounds nice, but um, I might want to give it a little more gain. So turn that up by a bit, and I might turn the master up a bit. I'm running into a cabinet simulator. There's a lot of places where you can get into the weeds. You know, I could go into there and start deep diving through the EQ and the different cabs and the different mics. And it's not that it's not worth doing that, but um, I think a lot of times you can you can wind up chasing your tail. So I, I usually leave it set to the exact same setting, adjust what I'm doing at the guitar, at, at the amp, and at, at pedals if I'm using pedals. You certainly can get in there, but you know, see what you can do without without um, messing with that stuff first. The first thing I kind of heard was like little. It's a little bit mid rangey, so I might pull the mids back a little further, and I may try to exaggerate that by pushing the the top and the bottom. That's kind of how I set my amp. And uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens if we use another one. So this is this old amp behind me. This is my old faithful. I made almost all the guitars on our first record were made with this amp. And um, I basically have it set exactly the same. The bass and the treble are at five, which is noon. And the volume is on six. Um, it doesn't have reverb on it, so you'll hear that right. I might give it a little more top end, maybe a little more volume. Okay, uh, we had somebody asking about using your volume control on your guitar. Um, one thing that's really important to know, one thing that's really important to know... Canadians have this rise at the end, so every statement sounds like a question. Linguistically, it's called the Canadian rise, which is, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk, then it goes down, and that means it's your turn to talk. 
One thing that's really important to know is how your guitar is wired. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a rabbit hole to fall down, but I have, I have found that some of the more profound effects on the sound of your guitar kind of start with how the controls are wired. So there's modern wiring, treble bleed, caps in the circuit, there's 60s wiring, 50s wiring, and I'm sure many, many more varieties or sub categories, just looking for the word, of those things. But um, it does really make a difference how the, the controls respond. I personally very much like the 50s wiring. That's how my Sorokins are wired. Um, how this guitar is currently wired. A lot of my other guitars are wired that way too. And I find that even though you do lose a little bit of top end, especially when you start to use gain, it actually kind of cleans up pretty, pretty good. And I find that the more modern circuits are a little less responsive, which I think some people really like, and they, they don't want them to change very much as you turn the volume down. They want it to be consistent. But I like the interactiveness of the 50s wiring. So I'm gonna to switch to an amp that I have set to be dirty. And so this is the Magic LAX, which is up here, the Tweed guy. I'll turn on a little bit of effects for fun. And I'll, I'll just kind of show you sort of how it works. When, the, when your volume knobs are all the way open, it should be very, well, it can be. I like it really quite dirty. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's pretend um, that these are not my amps and that these are maybe backline amps or someone else's amps that um, have been loaned to me. Getting onto a festival stage where you can't bring your own stuff it happens all the time. You're never going to see a two rock as backline, but you will see something that that um, isn't a far cry from a two rock. You'll maybe you'll see a, a tweed deluxe. Sorry, no, you would never see a tweed deluxe. What am I talking about? You might see a blackface deluxe, like a '65 reissue or the 65 reissue twin, those are pretty common. And this is kind of how I set my two rock as well. The first thing I do is get a vibe of what the amp is doing. Uh, like I mentioned before, set the knobs kind of neutral and get an idea of what the amp is doing and try to make a decision about what I need to do in order to make it feel better for me. I've already made changes to this, so this this would be a good, uh, a great place to start talking about how I set up my pedals with the two rock, but let's let's pretend this is a backline amp and it's it's going to be a twin so it's going to be cleaner than you ever want it to be still a very nice sound but it's not going to get me all the way to the um the sounds that i like to go for for my own music so we're going to wander down to pedal town um i've got the vemuram butter machine which is the mike landau signature drive i really really like it it's going to sound different through any amp so Let's just turn it on, see where it is, and make some decisions. First thought is it's a little quiet. It could hit the amp a little harder, so I'm gonna hit the amp a bit harder. And I might back the gain down just a little bit. Just using my ears to kind of um, try to make quick decisions about what I'm hearing. It was feeling a little dark, so I wanted to open it up. I'm probably gonna darken it up again later, but I wanna be able to, if my controls are all the way open, it's it's gonna be, um, it's not gonna be something that I'm gonna feel backed up against the corner. If I set it too dark, and then I have to bend over and 
turn up the, the treble, that's, that's a problem. So I want to be able to give myself a little bit of wiggle room on the guitar. So let's, let's set it like really bright. Some folks would probably really like that brightness. That's, that's a little too, that's a little too bright for me. So. And that's kind of what I would do with a backline amp. So uh, specifically one that's really clean. The second part for this question was what happens if you get something that's too dirty, usually would be something that's really small uh, or low wattage that breaks up really soon. If that's the case, I'm gonna switch over to the, um, to the Magic again, to the Tweed Deluxe. Uh, unfortunately, you also probably won't see one of these as backline, but you might see some kind of reissue or somebody built a clone or something similar. I don't have anything um, like any small wattage black face uh, Fender amps, which would be kind of perfect because you would see those on a backline stage, but you know, what we got is what we got. I would kind of listen to how dirty it is. And then I would say, well, I want something that's gonna give me a, a volume increase and maybe a little more top end. So I, I'm gonna stay with the with the Lando um, drive and probably turn the gain down quite a bit and maybe turn the volume up so that it'll hit the amp harder and give myself a little more top end and let's see what, what that does. That's what I do.